ever wondered how software is tested before it reaches you? Let's start by picturing a world without software testing. You download a new app or software full of anticipation, only to find it filled with bugs and errors that make it unusable. Frustrating, isn't it? This is exactly where software testing comes into play. Software testing is the unsung hero of the tech world. It is an integral part of the software development process, ensuring that the software you use functions as intended, is user-friendly, and most importantly, is bug-free. It's a process that scrutinizes every line of code in software, every functionality, every button, and every feature to ensure that they work flawlessly. Think of software testing as the quality control for software. Just like you wouldn't want a car that hasn't been tested for safety, you wouldn't want software that hasn't been thoroughly tested for functionality and usability. It's that crucial checkpoint that stands between the software development team and the end user, you. But software testing isn't a one-size-fits-all process. There are different types of testing. Manual testing, where testers manually execute test cases without using any automation tools. Black box testing, where the tester doesn't need to know the internal workings of the software. White box testing, that involves testing the internal structure, design, and coding. And gray box testing, a blend of both black and white box testing. Each of these testing types has its own unique approach and purpose, and they collectively contribute to building high quality, reliable software. So, are you ready to dive deep into the world of software testing? In this video, we'll be exploring the ins and outs of software testing, its importance, and how it's done. We'll be covering everything from the basics of manual testing, the key techniques used, some advanced tips and tricks, and the best practices to follow. Stay tuned to understand the detailed process of software testing. So, what is manual testing exactly? Well, in the most straightforward terms, Manual testing is the process of manually checking software for defects. It requires a tester to play the role of an end user and use all features of the application to ensure the behavior is as expected. You might be thinking, why not just automate everything? While automation does play a huge role in today's software development, manual testing still has its place. Firstly, it's cost-effective for smaller projects. Automated testing requires a significant upfront investment to set up and maintain the testing environment. Manual testing, on the other hand, can be done by anyone with a keen eye for detail and requires less financial investment. Secondly, manual testing is more flexible. It allows testers to explore different areas of the application without being limited by predefined automated test scripts. This exploratory nature of manual testing can often unearth bugs that automated tests might overlook. Lastly, manual testing is more user-centric. It allows the tester to experience the software from the user's perspective, offering insights into usability and user experience that a machine simply cannot replicate. Now, it's important to note that manual testing isn't just about randomly clicking buttons and seeing what happens. It's a structured process, and there are some fantastic tools out there to help. Jira, for example, is a project management tool used widely in manual testing. It allows testers to keep track of reported issues, their status, and who's working on them. It's brilliant for keeping everyone in the loop and ensuring nothing slips through the cracks. Then there's TestRail, a comprehensive test case management tool. It helps testers to organize, manage, and track their testing efforts, providing detailed reports and metrics that can be invaluable when it comes to evaluating the effectiveness of your testing. Of course, these are just two examples. There are countless tools available, each with its own strengths and suitability for different projects and teams. The key is to find the right tool for you and your team, one that complements your workflow and helps you do your job more effectively. So, to wrap up this introduction to manual testing, let's revisit the key points. Manual testing is the process of manually checking software for defects. It's cost-effective, flexible, and user-centric, making it an essential part of the software development lifecycle. And while manual testing can sometimes feel like a daunting task, Remember that there are plenty of tools like Jira and TestRail designed to make your life easier. They can help you manage your workload, keep track of issues, and ultimately, ensure that the software you're testing is the best it can be. With manual testing, we have the ability to discover and rectify software bugs before they reach the end user. There are several types of manual testing, including black box, white box, and gray box. Diving in headfirst, Let's start with black box testing. This technique is all about testing an application without knowledge of its internal workings. Imagine you're a detective 
examining a mysterious black box, trying to figure out what it does based solely on its reactions to your actions. You input something and then evaluate the output. Is it what you expected? If not, there may be a bug in the system. Now, why is black box testing so popular? Well, it's because it allows testers to play the role of an end user and ensure the system is working as expected. It's like stepping into the shoes of the user without any bias toward the system's internal code structure. Moving on, we have white box testing. This method is quite the opposite of black box. Here, you're not a detective anymore. Rather, you're more like a surgeon, dissecting the system and examining its internal structure. This technique requires a comprehensive understanding of the code as you're testing the software's internal logic. White box testing allows you to ensure each piece of the software is working as intended, right down to the individual functions, conditions, loops, and statements. It's like ensuring every gear in a clock is turning just right for accurate timekeeping. Then we come to gray box testing. Think of this as a blend of black box and white box testing. You have some knowledge of the system's internals, but not complete. It's like being a detective with a hint or a surgeon with a partial diagnosis. This allows you to test both the application's functionality and its internal workings, providing a more holistic view of the system's performance. Next, let's walk through the process of creating and executing test cases. Think of a test case as a set of conditions that the software must meet to be considered functioning correctly. Creating a test case involves defining an input, executing the test, and then comparing the actual output with the expected outcome. It's like setting a bar that the software must clear to prove its effectiveness. Executing a test case involves running the software under specific conditions and observing the results. This can be as simple as clicking a button to see if it opens the right page, or as complex as entering a series of commands to see if the software performs a sequence of actions correctly. Remember, the goal here is to validate that the software meets the defined requirements. Finally, let's discuss the importance of documenting findings. Documentation is your bread and butter in manual testing. It provides a record of what you've done, what you've discovered, and what still needs to be done. When you find a bug, it's crucial to document it thoroughly, including details such as where it was found, how to reproduce it, and any potential impacts it might have. This not only helps in tracking and resolving issues, but also serves as a learning resource for future testing endeavors. Moreover, well-documented findings can also help foster better communication with development teams. When developers have a clear understanding of the issue, they can more efficiently fix the bugs, improving the overall software quality. In essence, manual testing is a crucial part of ensuring software quality. It involves different techniques, including black box, white box, and gray box testing. The process of creating and executing test cases helps validate the software functionality while the documentation of findings aids in bug tracking and resolution. Effective manual testing requires a clear process from creating test cases to documenting results. As we continue to explore the world of manual testing, remember that it's not just about finding bugs, it's about ensuring that the software provides an optimal user experience. So put on your detective hat or your surgeon's gloves and let's continue our journey into the fascinating world of manual testing. Now that we understand the basics, let's delve into some advanced techniques. As we delve deeper into the world of manual testing, let's first explore scenario-based testing. This is a powerful strategy that allows you to test how a system would behave in a real-world situation. It's like a dress rehearsal for your software, where you play out various scenarios that could occur once your software is in the hands of users. For instance, consider a scenario where you're testing an e-commerce website. You might create a scenario where a user adds multiple items to their shopping cart, applies a discount code, removes an item, and then proceeds to checkout. This comprehensive scenario enables you to test various functionalities and how they interact with each other, thereby ensuring a smooth and seamless user experience. Another example could be for a banking app. You could create a scenario where a user logs in, transfers money to another account, checks their balance, and then logs out. This would allow you to test critical security features, transaction processing, and user interface elements. Now, let's move on to one of the most crucial aspects of testing, communication with development teams. Effective communication is the backbone of successful testing. The main goal here is to ensure that the development team understands the issues you found and can reproduce them to fix them. Firstly, when communicating issues, be specific. Instead of saying the application crashes, 
Say, the application crashes when I try to upload a file of size greater than 10 megabytes. This gives the developers a clear direction to start investigating the problem. Next, always include steps to reproduce the issue. This should be a detailed step-by-step -step guide that any developer can follow to see the problem for themselves. It's like leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for the developers to follow. Additionally, include any relevant screenshots or screen recordings. A picture is worth a thousand words, and a video could be worth even more when it comes to demonstrating a software issue. Finally, always maintain a respectful and professional tone. Remember, you're all on the same team, working towards the same goal of creating high-quality software. Now let's discuss some common pitfalls in manual testing and how to avoid them. The first pitfall is not understanding the application under test. If you don't know what the software is supposed to do, you can't effectively test it. So spend time familiarizing yourself with the application and its intended behavior. The second pitfall is rushing through testing. Manual testing requires patience and attention to detail. If you rush, you're likely to miss critical issues. So take your time and remember that the goal is quality, not speed. The third pitfall is only testing the happy path. This refers to the scenario where everything goes exactly as planned. However, real-world users don't always follow the happy path, and it's important to test for edge cases and unexpected user behavior. The fourth pitfall is not keeping up with changes in the software. As the development team makes changes, it's crucial to retest to ensure that they haven't introduced new issues. This is where regression testing comes in. The fifth and final pitfall is not learning from your mistakes. If you make a mistake in testing, don't just brush it off. Analyze what went wrong, learn from it, and improve for the future. With these advanced strategies, you can enhance your manual testing skills. How can we ensure effective and efficient manual testing? It's a question that's been asked time and again, and the answer lies within a set of best practices. These practices are not just guidelines. They're the lifeline to a successful manual testing process. Firstly, let's talk about organizing and managing the testing environment. The environment you test in is as important as the tests you perform. It's the foundation on which your testing castle stands. If the foundation is weak, the castle crumbles. So how do you ensure a solid foundation? Begin by creating a dedicated testing environment. Use a system or a device that is solely for testing purposes. This ensures that the test results are not influenced by any external factors. Keep the environment as close to the end user's environment as possible. This increases the chances of finding bugs that the end user might encounter. Next, manage your testing environment effectively. Keep track of the changes you make. Document the system configurations, the software versions, and any other relevant details. This helps in maintaining consistency and reproducibility in your tests. Additionally, it's important to maintain a clean testing environment. Clean up after each test. Uninstall the software, delete the test data, reset the system configurations. This ensures that each test starts from a clean slate, reducing the chances of false positives or negatives. Now let's move on to bug reports. Clear and concise bug reports are the backbone of effective communication in manual testing. A good bug report is like a good detective story. It gives all the necessary information but without the fluff. The first rule of writing a good bug report is to be clear. Clearly describe the bug and the steps to reproduce it. Avoid using jargon or technical terms that the reader might not understand. The second rule is to be concise. Keep it short and to the point. Don't add unnecessary details. The reader should be able to understand the bug and reproduce it by just reading the report once. Finally, include all the necessary details. The system configurations, the software version, the steps to reproduce the bug, the expected result, and the actual result. These details help the reader understand the bug and its impact. Last but not least, let's talk about continuous learning and improvement. Manual testing is not a static field. It's dynamic and ever-changing. New tools are developed, new techniques are discovered, new bugs are found. To stay on top of the game, continuous learning and improvement are crucial. Start by learning from your mistakes. Analyze the bugs that slipped through your tests. Understand why they slipped through and how you can prevent them in the future. Next, keep yourself updated with the latest trends and tools in manual testing. Attend webinars, read blogs, join forums, learn from the experiences of other testers. Lastly, always strive for improvement. Look for ways to make your tests more efficient and effective. 
experiment with different techniques, try out different tools. Remember, there's always room for improvement. So there you have it. The best practices in manual testing, organizing and managing your testing environment, maintaining clear and concise bug reports, and continuous learning and improvement. These practices are not just guidelines, they're the lifeline to a successful manual testing process. By adhering to these best practices, you can significantly improve your manual testing process. And remember, the goal is not just to find bugs, but to improve the quality of the software. And that, my friends, is the true essence of manual testing. We've covered a lot of ground today, so let's quickly recap. We started by exploring the basics of manual testing, highlighting its importance in the process of software development. We also examined common tools used in manual testing, such as JIRA and TestRail. Next, we delved into key manual testing techniques like black box, white box, and gray box testing. We also discussed how to create and execute test cases and the importance of documenting your findings. We then ventured into advanced tips and tricks with a focus on scenario-based testing examples. We even touched upon the art of effective communication with development teams and how to avoid common pitfalls. Lastly, we looked at best practices for organizing and managing your testing environment and maintaining clear, concise bug reports. We also emphasized the significance of continuous learning and improvement in this field. Remember, software testing is a crucial step in the development process, ensuring the final product is bug-free and user-friendly. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave any questions or comments.